Hi, welcome back to another video. Have you ever heard of anthropodermic bibliopagy? That's the act of binding books with human skin, and it's a real thing. You've probably seen it in movies, but there are also about 50 books that we know of that are bound in real human skin. Well, for today's project, I want to do the same thing. Except, I'm not going to use real human skin. I'm going to use real leather that just looks like human skin. And I'm not just going to bind a book. I'm going to build it from scratch. And we'll start with the paper. This is the paper I'm using. It's a 100-pound text paper. I could probably have gone with just 80 pounds. I want to age the paper so that it looks like an old grimoire. So I'm going to start by trying it with coffee. So I pour the coffee into a deep dish and put the papers in to soak. Now the truth is, I don't know which is better, coffee or tea. So I'm going to try it with tea as well. But I don't know which tea is a good one to use. I guess I should ask an expert. Earl Grey. Earl Grey, make it so. I'll go through the same process with the tea that I did with the coffee. I'm going to pour the tea into a deep pan and put the pages in to soak. As they're soaking, I can kind of see that the tea on the left is not quite as brown as the coffee on the right. I wonder if that's going to make a difference to the paper. I'm going to heat up my oven to 275 and I'll place the pages onto cookie sheets and cook them for about 10 minutes. You want to be careful because where they overlap, it does make a line, which I just live with even though it happened. Now that they're dry, I've got the coffee ones on the left and the tea on the right. Let's take a look at them and see what the difference is. Well, the tea ones are much lighter than the coffee ones. But interestingly, the tea ones are the same color on both sides, whereas the coffee ones are dark on one side and light on the other. Even though they have this really neat dark edge on the border, the difference in the color on the two sides makes me think that I would probably just go with tea in the future. Here you can see the white lines that happen when the pages were overlapped in the pan. I'm just going to mix these up so that I have a mixture of tea and coffee ones. It's a big, gigantic, fat stack now, and I need to flatten it. I've got a couple of pieces of scrap wood. This is from the old donut wall project you may have seen a video on. And then I'm just going to put some heavy weights on this and let it sit for a couple of days. see it flatten the stack quite a bit. Now we need to make the signatures. These are the little individual pieces that go inside the book. So I'm going to take out groups of five and we'll fold them in half. I can use a bone tool to help crease the edge. I just try to get a mix of the different pages. Soon I've got a stack of all of the individual signatures. But we need to flatten it, so I tried with the heavy weights again and it just wasn't enough. So I went ahead and created a little vise with some scrap. Tighten that down quite a bit. Now this one is just on the edges, and it works fine for this step. Now let's prepare the end pages. These are the pages that connect the paper to the backing. I just got some fancy uh, cardstock from the scrapbook aisle. I've got a couple of spare sheets of the paper. And we're going to laminate one page of each together. 
For this whole project, the kind of glue we're going to use is PVA glue. You recognize it as regular Elmer's glue or wood glue, tacky glue, even Mod Podge. But the glue that I'm going to use is this Cap Bond glue that's made specifically for books. I just happen to have some. So we'll cover one half of the page with glue and we'll spread it around. I'm using a silicone spreader to cover it completely. And then we're going to line up the fold line of the cardstock and our spare sheet and press them together. This laminates the center sheet and we'll cut it to size. Now it's time to start sewing the pages, but to help us with that, I'm going to start by making a jig. This will help us put the holes in the right spot. I've got a sheet of cardstock here that I've cut a little notch out of, and then I've measured down and written lines where I'm going to put my holes. This lets me just hook it right over each signature so that I make sure the pages are all lined up, and then with an awl, I just push through and make the five holes in each signature. This will make it a lot easier when I have to sew. My needle doesn't actually have to poke, poke a hole itself. It can just go in the hole that already exists. We'll do the same to our end sheet. Now with our end sheets and all of our signatures punched, you can see the holes all line up. I've built another jig to help me with the sewing. And then I've just taken some jute twine and pinned it above and below my text block. This will hold the jute in place while we sew. You can see also in the background that this is actually the same wood I was using before, I went ahead and made a full press out of it for future use. Now I'm going to use wax covered twine and I'm using an off white color. The process is simple. I'm going to start by going in the first hole, then I come out the second hole past the jute twine. Then I just loop around the jute and go back in that same hole. So it makes a little loop around the jute, and I pull that tight. Then I come out of the middle hole on the other side of the jute, wrap around the jute, and back in the same hole. And this is just the same process that I'm going to use for every single signature. When I reach the end, I'll just add the next signature and go straight up into the nearest hole and make my way back doing the exact same stitches. At the end of the first two signatures, I'll tie them together using a square knot like this, and then continue up into the third signature and make my way back. Now when we reach the end of the third signature, we do what is called a kettle stitch. I'm gonna stick the needle actually in between the pages and slide it around the knot and then come up through the loop that made and pull that tight. And this is the knot that I'll use every single time from now on at the end of each signature. Once I've finished every signature and they're all sewn together, it looks awesome. So I'll just remove the pins and I'm actually going to trim the jute twine, but I'm going to leave some excess on the end. And then I put the whole text block inside the vise that I built and, and I tighten it down. This gets it way tighter than just putting the heavy weights on it. I'm going to paint some PVA glue across the spine. Now I made a mistake here in that I should not have painted over the jute twine itself. 
one of the next steps we're going to do is we're going to round the back and the threads need to be able to move over the twine. But because I glue them here, they're not able to move. This is the rounding step after it's all been dried. We just hammer the edge. And I'm able to round it a little bit, but it would have been more successful if I hadn't have glued over the twines. Now for the boards, you usually use a thick cardboard, but I don't have any. But I do have this really thin plywood, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. You can see it's just a little bit bigger on every side. Using the jute cord, I'm marking where I need to drill some holes. First I go straight down so I've got holes in place. But the cord has to come in at a very shallow angle. So I then use my hand drill to kind of angle these out. And then I build a little channel using my Dremel tool. This channel lets the juke sit on top of it so that it's more flush with it. It won't be completely flush, but it'll be better. Now for the crazy step of unwinding the jute. And I don't mean just unwinding the individual strands. It's unwinding the strands themselves into the individual hairs or fibers. It's pretty messy. Now we're going to use some PVA glue. Just put it on there and kind of massage it through like we're shampooing it and we'll get a nice sharp alfalfa hairdo. And this allows us to pull it through the holes. Once we've got it through, I'm going to add a little more glue and then spread it out as thin as I can get it across this side of the wood. I don't want that sticking to my paper, so I'm just going to put some tin foil in between. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to peel that off without any trouble. And then on the other side, this is where the channels are. Put a little bit of glue on that and kind of push it down so that they can sit in that groove that I dremeled out. And here I'm just using a piece of blue plastic to keep it from sticking as well. And then it's back in the press for a couple of days. And luckily the tinfoil does peel off if I'm very careful. And now we can see the boards are now attached. I'm going to do another coat of PVA glue. This time it's okay to get on the jute cords because we're actually going to put down a piece of cotton fabric. I'm just gluing this to the back. This is just for extra strength. Now we pull out our human skin. Okay, just kidding. It's not human skin. This is most likely sheep skin. The color is pretty close to my own skin color. And it's got a texture that really feels like it could be arguably human skin. You'll see here soon we're going to cut it roughly to shape and then cut it a little more closely to shape. But my idea with this book is that uh, this is from the skin of a criminal. Uh, I made up a story behind it. He's a serial killer who killed a bunch of women who he thought were witches. As part of his punishment after his execution, the judge orders that his skin be used to bind a book that the witches themselves can use. This is my first time doing any of this, and so uh, it's also part of the story that uh, it's done by somebody who's maybe not a professional bookbinder. So a little bit of rusticness is okay. Imperfection is fine. And I'm just going to embrace that as part of the story. Now I've got it cut to shape, but it's almost too perfect. 
uh, it's too clean. And to make it look a little more like human skin, I thought maybe I'll put some freckles and moles on it. So I'm using alcohol inks, which I made myself. Uh, you may have seen my short that I posted where I made them. But I'm just sprinkling on some freckles and then drawing some darker moles on here and there so that it feels like it came from human skin. And to make it even more interesting, let's put a tattoo on it. Again, using alcohol inks, I'm going to put a tattoo here. And this tattoo is meaningful to the killer himself. He hated witches, so the tattoo is a picture of a witch burning at the stake. And the stake is a big hammer. And I chose a hammer because there's an old book from the Middle Ages called The Malleus Maleficarum, which is a book uh, for witch hunters. And it's a real thing that uh, they use to hunt and punish witches. And malleus means hammer. So the witch has horns because he sees her as a demon. The art style of the tattoo is a mixture of the old Middle Ages art style that's found in the Malia, Malleus Maleficarum, mixed with a more modern paint style. Um, I've decided that this killer maybe was captured and sentenced in the 1960s, so it's a little more modern. All right, we've got our tattoo on there. Now, this is very soft and thin, but the truth is it's actually too thick for what we want to do. So I have a tool here called a skiver, and I'm going to skive the edges. And I'm just scraping away, cutting away some of the leather around the edges to make it thinner. I get impatient with this, so I don't quite do it far enough, but it ends up working out in the end. But if I wanted to do it correctly, I should skive quite a bit more. To prepare the leather to be glued on, we're going to wet it all down. This lets it be a little bit stretchier and keep its shape as we deform it. We'll start on the spine. We'll cover the spine again with PVA glue, spread it all around. And then we're going to carefully try to line up the spine of the leather, press it down, and then give it a tug down to kind of tighten it in place. Using the bone tool, the bone shaper, I can smooth it out and kind of push it around. Now we're going to move on to the boards, covering them completely with PVA and spreading them out to the edges. Then I stretch that leather over the th top. And the edges, again, the same thing. I've cut them off at 45 degrees in the corners. And we'll just fold it around all the way across. And soften all of the edges and corners. Now we'll glue the end pages on. Same thing, cover the end page with PVA glue and push it down right over top of the leather and wood. there we have it all glued together but it's still quite plain so let's do something on the front to make it a little more interesting I don't have fancy leather working tools so I'm going to improvise first I'm going to take some packing tape and cut it into thin strips and I'm going to make a rectangle around the front and do a second rectangle inside leaving a tiny little gap of just one or two millimeters. And then I'm going to gold leaf this. So I paint the adhesive in between and just put the gold leaf down. Now this is fake gold leaf. It's not actual 24 karat gold. Then we carefully pull this off. And we've got a not so perfect, but still pretty nice gold leaf look. 
Now let's add a little dimension to the cover. I'm going to wet it. And I'm going to use this tool, which is actually an unfinished project. It's a little tiny sword that I started to make. It's not super sharp, and it is rounded. So I'm going to create another border. And if I tilt this, I can actually press the leather down on one side. So it lowers it on the side of that I'm pressing down and just adds a little bit of dimension. And we'll just add a crisscross in the middle. I'm pressing down to enhance the height difference there. Now I want everyone to know when they first look at this book that it's supposed to be bound in human skin. So I've got these letters, they're punches. They're actual metal punches, they're not for leather. You'll see they're very shallow. But if I wet the leather and I can push down with my hand and be real careful not to tilt the edges of the punch into it, I can go ahead and put the letters right across it. Human skin. I like the way that looks. Let's add it to the spine as well. Now let's seal the whole thing up. I'm using this stuff called Resoline. It's an acrylic leather seal. And it says, get the surface wet first and then put it on. So that's what I'm doing here. Even though it's a little bit bluish, it dries clear. And I end up, after this dries, I end up doing a second coat over top of it without wetting it down the second time. We'll clamp it like this and let it dry. Now I want to add something interesting on the inside. So I've got some calligraphy ink here and a dip pen. And we're going to add a title to it in the title page. And I've already drawn it real lightly in pencil here so that I can erase it when I'm done. And I'll just use the black ink to draw and fill in the letters that I've drawn here. The title being Eustitia Maleficarum, which means the witch's justice as opposed to the Malleus Maleficarum, which is the witch's hammer. So we'll turn a page, and I'm going to use some Indian red ink. This is kind of a reddish brown, and this time I'm going to use a glass pen, and we're going to write a little message here that explains what this book is. Again, when it's all dry, I can just erase all of my pencil lines like they were never there. And lastly, I'm going to use some red ink. Now let's start to fill in some of the pages, well, at least one. Just draw a skull in here and some pretend witchy writing, spells and things. These are all just made up shapes, but the idea is that they look like they're witchcrafty. And as time goes on, I'll probably draw more things on future pages or just use it as a sketchbook. Well, that's it. A couple of months of work. Let's see how it turned out. I had a lot of fun making this. It's the first time I've ever made a book all the way from scratch. And I loved all of the new skills that I got to learn. And I certainly learned things that I would do better the next time and where I would take more time. Please take the time to give me a thumbs up so that YouTube knows that other people might want to watch this video too. And subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. Until next time. Don't be bored, be creative.